She is known for being one of the most significant poets of the 20th century. Recognized for her powerful and distinctive style, she was shortlisted for the Nobel Prize in 1965. Her name is Anna Akhmatova. In the world of poetry, one name stands out as a true legend, Anna Akhmatova. Born Anna Andreevna Gorenko, she is widely recognized as one of the most significant poets of the 20th century. Her pen name, Akhmatova, became synonymous with brilliance and emotional depth. Akhmatova's poetic repertoire spanned from short lyric poems to intricately structured cycles, but it was her tragic masterpiece, Requiem, that left an indelible mark on literature. This powerful work delved into the horrors of the Stalinist era, showcasing Akhmatova's ability to evoke emotions with her economy of words and emotional restraint. Her writing broke new ground with its strong and clear female voice, captivating her contemporaries and beyond. Despite facing immense censorship and condemnation from the Stalinist authorities, Akhmatova chose to remain in the Soviet Union, becoming a witness to the turbulent events of her time. The themes she explored in her work, such as time, memory, and the challenges of living under Stalinism, struck a chord with readers who yearned for a voice that reflected their own experiences. However, the knowledge of Akhmatova's life is somewhat limited due to the destruction of records caused by war, revolution, and the Soviet regime. Many of those close to her suffered tragic fates, as her first husband, Nikolai Gamilyev, was executed by the secret police, and her son and common-law husband experienced years of imprisonment in the Gulag. Despite the hardships she faced, Anna Akhmatova's literary legacy endures as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Her poems continue to inspire and move readers around the world, reminding us of the power of words to capture the essence of our shared humanity, even in the darkest of times. In 1912, Anna's first book of verse, Evening, was published by the Guild of Poets. It quickly gained popularity, with the small edition of 500 copies selling out and receiving positive reviews in the literary press. Anna carefully selected only 35 poems out of the 200 she had written, including notable pieces like, Grey-Eyed King, In the Forest, Over the Water, and, I Don't Need My Legs Anymore. These poems turned Anna into a famous and striking young writer, a reputation she had not anticipated. A year later, Anna's second collection, The Rosary, was published in March 1914. This book firmly established her as one of the most sought-after poets of the time. Her aristocratic manners and artistic integrity earned her titles like Queen of the Neva and Soul of the Silver Age, a period of Russian poetry. The popularity of her work inspired thousands of women to compose poems in her honor, mimicking her style. However, this also led Anna to remark that she had taught them how to speak but did not know how to make them silent. During this time, Anna formed close friendships with Boris Pasternak and Alexander Bloch, which sparked rumors of an affair with the latter. However, in July 1914, as World War loomed, Anna wrote poems expressing her apprehension about the approaching frightening times. The outbreak of war marked the end of the Silver Age, as Russia plunged into a dark storm of war, civil strife, revolution, and repression. Despite the turbulent times, Anna's personal life continued to be eventful. She had a relationship with the mosaic artist and poet Boris Amram, who also created mosaics featuring her. In 1917, Anna published her third collection, Belia Style, which poet and critic Joseph Brodsky later described as having a personal and lyrically terrifying quality. Her writing during this period was characterized as grim, spare, and laconic. As the revolution began in February 1917, Petersburg descended into chaos. The city faced scarcity of basic necessities, and Anna experienced the loss of friends and the exodus of many to safer places. Despite having the option to leave, Anna made the courageous decision to stay and was proud of her choice even amidst the hardships. In 1918, at the height of her fame, Anna divorced her husband and married a seriologist and poet Vladimir Shelechko, though some of her friends disapproved. She described feeling filthy and hoped that the marriage would bring about a sense of cleansing and freedom, akin to going to a convent. During this time, Anna also engaged in affairs with theater director Mikhail Zimmerman and composer Arthur Lowry, who set some of her poems to music. Do you want to explore more novelists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.